So good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Spirit of Speyside Whiskey Awards 2020 stroke 2021. Um, 2020 didn't happen, so it's been carried forward to 2021. So the Spirit of Speyside Awards have been going on for over 20 years, I believe. And um, basically, the uh, there's, I think this year or last year, this year, there's over 40 whiskies submitted. Uh, they're narrowed down to eight whiskies, uh, which you'll try tonight over four categories. There's two whiskies in each category. Uh, I'm delighted to have Graham Cool, uh, formerly of Glenmorey Distillery in Speyside. Uh, Glenmorey's in Elgin. Uh, but Graham, most of you might know Graham now from Dingo Distillery, uh, where he's down there. Uh, showing the Irish how to make whiskey properly. <laughs> I, I would never claim that. <laughs> not, not, on, not on this uh, Zoom, maybe on others. Um, so let's give you the, the format tonight. It's, it's sort of a blind tasting, but not quite. Um, uh, on the sort of email board that you got sent out telling you to buy tickets, it would have listed eight whiskies that you're going to taste. Uh, and they're broken down into four categories. You'll see your bottles are labelled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Um, so that gives you, that's the running order. Uh, a, B first, and then C and D. Uh, so A and B are grouped together, and then we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll taste these whiskies. Um, I'll give you the official tasting notes from the, the distilleries. Uh, nothing's going to guide you. And then after that, there'll be a, a, I'll put up a poll on the screen and you can select what was your favorite, A or B. And then we'll do that again for C and D, E and F, and G and H. And at the very end, we'll have one big final vote, which is your favorite whiskey of, out of all eight. Uh, we'll submit them to, to the guys in Speyside and that'll go towards selecting what is the, the best uh, Speyside whiskey uh, of this, this year. Uh, some, some really good whiskeys for you. Um, none of them are cast strength, okay? Your first two are actually 40% ABV. Uh, there is one at 46. We will tell you as we move on if there's something like something going to be 46%. <clears throat> Just so you don't get a... I, I remember a couple of years ago, we gave you a 60% one, never told you it was 60%, and that shocked a few people. I suppose it would on a blind tasting. <laughs> um, but if you want to get your first two whiskies A and B ready, either into a glass. And um, myself and Graham know the whiskies. Um, I suppose we, we could let you know actually the two whiskies that you're going to try. We're just not going to tell you whether they're A or B. Um, so, you know, uh, one of them is a uh, Tam de Vuelen, uh, and that's a, a, a sherry cask edition. Um, we've had a couple of space out tastings over the last year last year and we've had Tam the Villain in it twice uh, it was extremely well received and also another one is uh, Cardew, Cardew Amber Rock um, and Cardew is a, a great distillery and it's every year it seems to pop up somewhere in these awards it's always in there so there's the, when they're tasting these blind when the, the judging panel is selecting the whiskies that go through the, the top eight Cardew always seems to make an appearance uh, which is excellent and there's actually two Cardews in the tasting tonight so it must, uh, must be doing something right. Someone's asking, is that the Space Side Tartan? Uh, no, this is just the shirt that I bought from Tommy Hilfiger. And I actually bought it for a Burns night we had in January. <laughs> and that was where it made its first out. And, but I thought it fitting to have it on this evening, even though it's probably not, it's definitely not a proper Scottish tartan. It's probably some hipster designer in New York put it together and charged me a fortune for it, you know? Um, so you want to get your... First whiskey into glass, A or B. Um, you want, probably want to taste them side by side. Maybe if you have two glasses, brilliant. Uh, if you don't, don't worry about it. Just take your time. You don't have to drink it all. Just pour yourself a small amount if need be. Um, both of them are 40% ABV. And um, just I'll give you the sort of the, the official sort of taste the notes for sample A, okay? So it says here on the nose, it should be sweet, full and vibrant with fresh pear and lychee notes dancing above buttery pastry. 
Now, buttery pastry is a very common thing in Scotland because we love pastry and we love butter and then we just put a load of meat in the middle of all and then in it and we call it a scotch pie. Uh, no, no meat here, but... Uh, and then on the palate, on the, what it says, sweet and spicy from the start, like a fresh fruit salad finished with a splash of cream from fresh toasted oak. And it, the finish is, it should be quite long, spicy, sweet, creamy and comforting. Let's have a, hold on, put someone in there. Let's have a, a wee nose of that. Yeah. Don't even get the sweetness on the nose, but I think you can say that about most whiskies, really. And there is a bit of fruitiness, you know, a little bit, a little bit of tropical on this. Is it, maybe that's the lychee. I, I don't pick up lychee, but then I've actually never ate a lychee, so I can't actually tell you what a lychee tastes or smells like, so. You, you don't get many lychees in Dingle. <laughs> There's not many in Speyside either, is there? <laughs> no, definitely not, no. Uh, just, just a story here that the last normal whiskey event I did, I think, in public was this very same tasting. We did it, we hosted it in, in Dick Max back in tail end of January uh, 2020. So, so it seems very strange to, to come back to these, well, more than a year later. Uh, but, uh, you know, the Whiskey Awards are, are a great thing. And, and you said there's two Cardoos in tonight, but they really do shuffle it about. Uh, year on year and you know sometimes the big boys win sometimes the small boys win it's nice to see it and with all the different age categories as well it allows you to to enter you know your different whiskies and hopefully some that are affordable and then you know they're not out of reach so it's a yeah it's a it's a great event um so your votes tonight will go forward and because there's quite a lot of you 100 i think there's 120 of you you know, whatever we say tonight will will sway the the overall vote. So, um, but yeah, main thing is just to enjoy your whiskies. I think you're right about the affordable whiskies, and the actually both A and B, the the guy price is forty five pounds, and so what you know, just for maybe about fifty fifty five euro. Tam Tam the Vulans are an interesting distillery. It's a, it, it was one of those built in this. I think it was built in the sixties, on 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 the what was the, the the whiskey boom before, before this whiskey boom probably. Uh, you know I don't think there was whiskey distilleries built. Many new ones built after that, but very much a a, a blending malt. You wouldn't have seen much single malt out there. It's owned by uh, White and Mackay, so. It would be feeding into the white Mackay blend, but even with that, it, it was mothballed for a period of time and then reopened. And so it's, uh, yeah, it's. It is, it is a whiskey that it's only in the last what, about a year, well, the last two years, three years maybe, that it's starting to appear as its own sort of brand as a single malt. Yeah. Um, and I, I really enjoy it. I have to say, uh, it's a great whiskey. Um, I think it, it shut from 1995 to 2007, so that does kind of explain why we're starting to see whiskeys being released from it, from it, well, from from now or a few years earlier. You know, you'd imagine six, seven year old and upwards, it was starting to see the light of day. Uh, yeah, you'd probably see you'll see start to see more time than Yeah, that's a, that's a lovely whiskey. Um, we, we, we've had it here on a couple of tastings, like I said, last year. And, um, you know, it, it actually, it, when we asked people what was their favourite whiskey on the night, I think uh, a Tam and actually actually won it. And it was up against some of the the, the bigger, well-known brands with bigger age statements. There was a, you know, there was an Acallon 12 in there, for instance, and I think Glen Fark was 15. So, it, you know, it punches above its weight. It does really well. Uh, I'll give you the, the sort of tasting notes we have for uh, sample B. Um, so on the nose, it says a bouquet of marked by fresh baked tartatan and vanilla pod, soon giving way to another level of charm and nuances of banana, caramelised orange, fresh ginger, completes this tapestry of temptation. Uh, someone's been busy with their dictionary uh, for this one. 
And then on, it says on well, the taste, it's warm and inviting. And the palate detects an avalanche of exotic fruits, glazed nectarines and frangipan. Shortly enlightened by hints of sticky toffee pudding, demerara sugar and Seville oranges. Man, that's something else going on there, eh? Didn't, didn't just read the disc and dictionary that ate it as well. And the finish, complex and rich fruitcake and overripe apricots. Uh, lots, of free, uh, going. <laughs> lots of fruit Feel free to put anything up on the, in the chat if you've got anything yeah. you want to ask or any comments, what you're thinking about the whiskies. Um, so then, no, just so everybody knows, we're still on A and B, uh, and we'll put up a, a vote in a, a couple minutes' time there, uh, so you can uh, select your favourite of A and B, just for anyone who's joined in a little bit late. So the, the Cardew Amber Rock was born, really, of the, the whisky shortage when you started to see age statements drop off um, labels, you know, Cardew 12, um, which will appear later on in the tasting, uh, you know, is a, is a very uh, well-known whiskey and well-known age, but Amber Rock was, was born of the, the let's see, when, when whiskey started to, to run short and uh, the whiskey basically became younger in the bottle. So um, I don't know for certain, but I would guess, you know, this whiskey's, both these whiskies will be, you know, uh, they're obviously under uh, 12 years old, you probably, Going in around the six, seven, eight year old mark for the for them. Um, on on that, the card card do. Um, it's not the so, like you mentioned that like the whiskey sort of like a whiskey shortages and maybe age statements coming off bottles. That's not the first time that's happened to card because that happened back. Uh, I think what was it in the, the late nineties, early two thousands, because they sell a lot of whiskey in Spain and there was a bit of an uproar. They they actually changed the label. Uh, I'll show you the, the label of the car the car do in the moment, but it, it was very it was changed to Cardo, and uh, instead of ending in D H U, we changed it to D O W, and I think they, they took single malt off it, and I think they called it something else. I can't remember. It wasn't blended malt or something. Like they called it. it they called it pure malt, and that, that was, was it, yeah. That that that, uh, that created the problem, and, and and eventually pure malt was was banished as a term being allowed um they even changed the signposts on the whiskey trail to car down <laughs> they went that far but uh, but quite rightly it, it shook the industry up a bit and and, and the scotch whiskey uh, regulations the technical file was was tightened up after that so it, it probably has definitely has helped things so sometimes people have to push the boundaries to just to force change or or at least force people to have a look at what's yeah. going. Definitely, it's good. It's good to see that you have to. Like, you can't just be the same, same mm -hmm. old, same old. You know, yeah. uh, the whiskey world's evolving. Um, I suppose um, someone, a lot of people try to do a bit of change on uh, what was it Sunday night, Monday morning there in the, the football world. And that you know, that change isn't happening. <laughs> <laughs> but what it has done is made non-age statements more acceptable. I think you know. I think uh, if if the quality is there, then the number on the bottle, the digits don't particularly matter. I totally agree. You know, it's what's inside the bottle, what it tastes like. It's you know, you, what does it say? Don't judge a book by its cover. So you know, you don't buy a whiskey on its label. You buy it what's inside there, and that's because you, you can't drink the box or the label. You know, you can you can drink what's inside the bottle. So so I'm, we're going to watch the poll. <laughs> I'll we'll launch the poll and then you, you can tell us whether what your favourite was it whiskey A or whiskey B. And it should pop up on your screens in a second. Very close voting there. Still a few people to vote. 85%, well, 87% of people have voted. Come on, come on, where are you? Where's the slow coaches? 
Still deciding, probably. Um, one thing I, I, I didn't think and factor into this is um, it's, it's, there's maybe two people sharing a Zoom thing and you may have difference of opinion. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you, might, um, you might want to want, or vote the same. Uh, at the moment, this looks like uh, it's looking like a, a, a Scottish referendum vote, uh, 55 to 45% there. And uh, Whiskey A uh, seems to have got it. It's going to end the poll now. We'll hit it on for a minute. So uh, I'll throw this down. It's a little bit dumb stuff. So Whiskey A won it. And I'll let you know what Whiskey A was. It was the Cardew Amber Rock. And that was a uh, Whiskey A. And by default, Whiskey B was the, the Tam the Villain. Uh, I think both, both were great whiskies. Uh, I just realised I didn't actually vote, but then I, it's a bit hard for me to vote when I've got the whiskies in front of me. And I, in fairness, I like both brands. They're excellent. Um, I think from, from memory, going back to last year's tasting, the Tam the Villain came up out on top. So it's interesting. I would have, I would have expected to be honest the Tam the Villain coming out on top based on our previous tastings and a lot of people in here would have uh, would have done these tastings so it's it's interesting I think that's what it's good about doing things blind as well because it, it it makes you think about what you're drinking as opposed to what the label looks like um, and so, and with this as well this is completely blind with, with Zoom you're there's no commentary going on and no discussion so yeah yeah. Oh, You're not being swayed by the person sitting at the next table, are you? Yeah. So we'll move on to our uh, next two whiskies, uh, which is C and D. Uh, and this category is called the 12 years and under. I didn't actually mention what the last category was. That was a non-age statement. So there's no age statements on the last two bottles. Uh, so this category, there are age statements on the bottles and it's 12 years and under. Uh, so one of the whiskies is Aberlour, 10 years old, and the other whiskey is Cardew, 12 years old. So another Cardew. Um, Graham, just so you know, as I bottle these, it doesn't affect anybody or anything. Uh, the Space Eye Whiskey Awards said I should have bottled a certain whiskey as C and the other bottle as D. Uh, I done it the wrong way around. I put the labels the wrong way, so okay. It's it, it. They're all it, they were all done that way. It's not like people are mixed up. It's they're all done that way. Um, so it's not a, shouldn't be a big issue. Um, both of these, I think, are still yeah. We're, they're still both forty percent ABV. Okay, um, so you can add water if you want to. If you think it will open up and, and bring more to it, I, I've actually felt that. The, the, the first two whiskies were very easy drinking as they were. Um, you know, I don't know what anyone else uses if they add a, a little bit of water uh, if they think that brings out some more flavours. It generally does. Um, so we'll go on to your tasting notes of your sample C here. Well, on the nose, this should be dry, fresh, uh, fruity aroma. Um, of early autumn atoll, apples and pears and subtly enhanced with sweet notes of vanilla and mint toffee. The taste, this should be exceptionally smooth and creamy, the spicy sweet nutmeg and honey combined with the, the dewy freshness of autumn fruits. Dewy freshness of autumn fruits, is that like picking an apple up off the grass when it's fallen off the tree very early in the morning when the dew is still there? Do you think about it, have you ever stood in an orchid and you pick up an apple off the ground early in the morning and there's an aroma of freshness there, you know, coming across. And if you bite into that red apple or green apple, you get that crispiness and that sweetness. I can get that. Yeah. I can understand that as opposed to the frangipan in the last one. That just wasn't happening. And then you turn around in the orchard and there's a dog behind you and you go, oh. <laughs> That's where the added character's coming from. <laughs> 
Uh, the finish on this, it just says long, soft, and warming. Uh, I would say when you're when you're writing tasting notes, the finish is the hardest one to actually come up with something different uh, because you kind of want it to be long, and you certainly don't want it to be sharp. And you know, warming is generally the feeling you get once you drink whiskey. So, if anybody out there has very novel notes for for finishes, then send them my way. I'll I'll certainly use them. I once described um, Dalmore, 12 year old, and uh, as freshly ridden horse saddle. And uh, I enjoyed that tasting so much, and I got so much, I don't know about grief or stick over it. I don't know, I, they weren't complimenting either. But at one stage, in, in one drunken conversation with my business partners very late at night, uh, uh, once we were getting new business cards all, done up. And they said, what do you want on your business card? Just put that tasting note on it, freshly ridden horse saddle. So for um, a couple of years, I actually had that tasting note, freshly ridden horse saddle on my business card under my phone number. And it was great reaction because what you see when you hand it over your business card, you've got to see if people actually read it or not. Because if they read freshly ridden horse saddle, guaranteed to win. What? You know, they, they, they look, look a very different way at you. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting to see that. Yeah, that was a, it was a nice way of uh, finding out if someone really cared about having your business card and you want to do business with them in the future. I might have to do something similar again. Um, at least at least you didn't get it tattooed on you. That would be a little <laughs> more. Uh, I'll give you, the, I'll give you the, the, the official taste notes of sample D. Nose, heady, with pear drops, heather, resin and sweet honey notes. Palate, well balanced, smooth mouthfeel, sweet and fresh, then drying. Finish, lingering sweet smoke in the attractive drying aftertaste. So we're going to look at all of that faint space out smoke alongside that floralness. They actually pick up a tiny amount of it on the nose. So Aberlauer Distillery, we've spoken about Cardew, but Aberlauer is the is part of the Pernod Ricard uh, group. But it was actually originally it was it was it was owned by Pernod Ricard before Pernod Ricard um, merged with Chivas. So Pernod Ricard was the smaller uh, entity then and merged with Chivas, but obviously became the the the, the name at the top. So. Again, Aberlour was a, was really a, quite a small scale uh, distillery, uh, not really in the forefront. The Aberlour Ten is is a is 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 a space side stalwart really, but I do believe I've heard that you know, the Aberlour Ten may be delisted or may already be delisted. So uh, once we know which, one, which, so there's a lot of focus gone into the the Aberlour Abuna. You know, the, the, the cast mm -hmm. and sherry, you know, the, that big, rich, spicy one. Um, I love our lower. It's a great place to visit. Um, it's a great distillery, and there's a, a lovely little bar just down the road from it. The, the, what one is it? Is it the Mashton? Mashton, yeah. Uh, a lovely little bar down, just, around, just down the road. Um, I actually, two years ago, 2019, I actually stayed in our lower. 2018 at the Space I Whiskey Festival, I stayed in Rothis. Uh, I love Rotters. I stayed in the Station Hotel, which is owned by the, the company that uh, for sides who make the stills now. They bought the hotel and redone it up. And I, I always tell this story, so I'm sorry if you've already heard this. Um, there's a bit of rivalry between Rothis and Aberlour. And um, I was staying in Rothis. Rothis has a couple of distilleries in it, uh, the Glen Grant, uh, Glen Rothis, and I think Glen Spade. And I was sitting at the Victoria Inn in uh, Rothis, so a lovely old pub. Uh, it still has the decor from the 1960s. It hasn't been done up. You know, that laminated wood wall, and, you know, it's it's still like that. It's a, it's a great, there's a lot of character in it, and it's probably the size of people's, most people's front rooms. And But after a day of drinking lots and lots of whiskey, uh, lots of Glen Grant, lots of Glen, Glen Rothis, so lots of 
you know, whiskies from the village of Rothis, I decided that I wanted something a little bit different. So I actually ordered an Aberlour whiskey and the bartender, or the owner, who actually works for Shivas in Aberlour, um, was a bit annoyed at that. You know, he said, what are you ordering that stuff for? You're, you know, you're, you're in Rothis. You can't be ordering any whiskey from Shitey Town. And that's how Rothis describe Aberlour as Shitey Town. There's a little bit of rivalry. They're only about three, four miles apart in fairness. And so there was a bit of rival there, I suppose probably a sporting rivalry as well with different local teams and whatnot. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely place to go if you ever get the chance to go either Rothis or Aberlour. They're great bases if you're going to the Space Eye Whiskey Festival. I generally go to one or the other. I try to sort of mix it up every year. And then uh, in 2019, when I was staying in Aberlour, I decided to get a bus over to Rothis have a few beers in that the Victoria Inn and then get a taxi back. And uh, as, as soon as I walked in the pub, and I hadn't been there in a year now, I'd been there in 2018, this is 2019 in May. And uh, as soon as I walked in, the gentleman behind the bar was, how you doing? How's it going in Dublin? You know, a whole year has passed and he's remembered me. And that, that's when you go, I'm not leaving this bar until I'm getting kicked out at closing time or, well, when is closing time? At very late in the morning. So I've had many a great night in that bar and I'm, I'm dying to get back to Speyside so I can just go there and have a few beers and a few drams and sit with the locals. And, and that's in my, my first visit there, one of the locals, I didn't know him from Adam, and he's in his big yellow jacket. He's obviously a, a forklift driver, works in the warehouse and in the whiskey industry. He buys me a pint. That is a, that's a very unique thing in Scotland, the stranger buying you a pint. Your friends buying you a pint is a unique thing, but a stranger buying you a pint in Scotland is even, what the, what is that all about? I was shocked. I was I, I nearly fell off my chair. I was given this pint. The bartender was there to hear. Your man just bought that for you. So, right, so I said, thanks very much. He nodded his head. I drank the beer and I went to buy him one back, but he was leaving. He says, no, I'm going. Um, I'm, I'm leaving. Uh, I'm, I've got it. I'm, I'm working in the morning, whatever. And uh, I says, what would you buy me a beer for? He says, son, it's because the people like you have got a job. So all you tourists come in here and spend your money on whiskey and you spend the money in the pubs and the bars and the restaurants. You know, this is what, it's great to see, you know. And so thank you very much, you know. And it's, it's a, you know, it's a great thing. And I, I just, I wanted to buy that man a pint, you know. Anyway, that was in 2018, I think. 2019, when I walked in, he was at the bar, so I was able to buy him a pint. And then he was like, why are you buying me a pint? He says, I'm returning the favour from last year. And, you know, and then chats and relationships just build up, you know. And I, I know that, you know, if I don't go over there now until 2022, I know when I walk in that bar, hopefully he'll be standing there in his big yellow jacket, you know, the owner bartender will be behind the counter. And when I walk in, I hope they just go, how's Dublin? You know, it'd be great. It'd be absolutely great to hear. So that was sample C and D and we rabbited on a little bit there. Um, I hope you enjoyed them. And um, see uh, see what, you, what your favourites are. Um, a few people are trying to guess by, by the colour of the whiskey. I'm going to tell you now, that doesn't always work out because I, I decant these bottles into the, in the, as they are. And a lot of the time, from the big bottle to this like small bottle you have, the, the colour changes. I, I was wrecking my head on one of these whiskies. I was like, why has the colour changed so much? I, I generally couldn't believe it. Um, it just went, whoa, what's going on? Anyway, we'll give you, we'll give you, we'll, we'll stick up the next uh, poll. Uh, the next vote, and um, we'll get you to vote either C or D, and then we'll tell you what they are. Um, there we go. Get voting.
Right, there we go. Um, whiskey C and Whiskey D. I wasn't expecting uh, the, these results. Um, so, Whiskey C is, let's end the poll there. Whiskey C is the Avalar 10 year old. And Whiskey D, D on it, is a Cardo 12 year old. Uh, that's that was a. I, I honestly thought Avalar might have, might have stole that one. Um, so that's uh, interesting. The the the, the card has nailed it. Well done to Cardo. Graham, you mentioned and you tell that that big picture we were talk, before we started the event. That big picture behind you there is the the Glen Mori Distillery. Um, yeah. Where you spent many a year. Um, I've I've visited a couple of times. Uh, my last time was actually I think in 2012. I think it was February. It was a winter. It was a bad winter as well. I was staying at the hotel across the road from it, the the cream or the, the, the whatever eight acres is it? Eight acres, yeah, yeah. It's uh, a, the, the another nineteen. It. It's a it's a strange hotel, you know. It's like uh, <laughs> I was actually doing my general certificate in distillation in that hotel, so I spent all day there in a conference room. And then I spent all night in the bar and then I slept there and I was there for a week. Um, and it was just, it's a little bit out of Elgin. So, and the weather was really bad. So it wasn't one of them where you'd walk in to Elgin and to go to the sample somewhere else. And it wasn't one of them where you'd, you'd be justified getting a taxi and it's just not far enough to justify it. But um, no. you're right, that the uh, Glenmore is right across the road from that. So uh, just across the road. But if you, if you tried to go in a straight line, you'd have to. <laughs> get through the river lossy which is you know it's yeah deep enough well here sometimes it's very deep if anybody has seen photos of glen murray in a flood it's a quite an interesting thing we uh, i think i experienced two floods when i was there 2009 was the the worst um uh, you know at the bottom of the distillery it would have been 10 feet deep and the, at the top end of the distillery, it was just starting to lap into the boiler house, which would have been catastrophic. You know, we we were pretty uh, pretty organised for things like that. Though we all the pumps were on plugs, which they weren't hard wired in, so you could unplug them and lift them. Um, so we were we could do most things. So so it didn't really stop the distillery for too long. But there's a great photo of a uh, of the the malt intake or just underneath the malt bins, with, full of water, and this frog or to a toad probably sitting on top of the, the the malt elevator, looking quite happy with himself, thinking this is this is how Glenmurray should be, you know, full of water, and I'll I'll live here quite happily. That's a, it's a great, absolute great photo. But yeah, just just. Yeah, it was a nightmare, though. a lot of mess. Uh, but there's now a flood alleviation scheme in place, so Glen Murray is safe. And that that allowed the distillery to expand uh, a couple of times. So now, well, when I started at Glen Murray, we could produce 2.1 million litres. And when I left, our capacity was 6 million litres. Wow. It was a big, big step, big step up for us. That's huge. I mean, I, I mean, I remember um, um, it was 2019, I, I went, I visited Mortlach Distillery in Dufftown. Um, the, the person doing the tour, the distillery man at the time was, we were talking about rivers and, um, you know, how they're flooding and then, and then in the summer they're nearly, there's nothing in them. I mean, it was just quite unknown in Scotland, you know, se you know, severe flooding didn't happen as often as it did and drought didn't happen as often as it did. We we're pretty high up in Scotland, you know, in space side, you know, we're the, the highest elevation in probably the UK in space side. Mm -hmm. And then they were saying, you know, like climate change is real, it's really happening, you know. Yeah, um, the, the stories use a lot of water and they, they pull things in from, uh, from the rivers and whatnot for cooling and whatnot. But as he said, the climate change is real, we have to, we yeah. have to manage the, our water supplies that we have here, and we, we've got. Space is a beautiful region. There's lots of beautiful rivers there, none so than the, the River Spey itself. So you would really you know mind. with yeah, you'd know with Glen Murray if it rained, rained for a full day and then start kept raining the next day, then you knew you were you're in for trouble. You know, two days of solid rain 
which you know sounds a lot, but it's it's not. Um, and also, you know, Glen Murray is ten kilometers, six miles inland, but when high tide, if you had high high river level and then high tide, the actual the river backed up and you could see the the level came up, oh, probably six to twelve inches just just with the high tide. So it was a you you got to know what to look for, but still, you know, you just can't fight it. And we had we had a you've probably seen them at the Cooperages pyramids of barrels. Well, we had a we didn't know we had a small pyramid set up at the at the bottom of the distillery in 2009 and obviously the river level came in and the water came in and the barrels were sitting in water but obviously these things barrels will float eventually so when the water level reached a, a certain height this pyramid decided it would float and then all the barrels came down and it was like thunder because they were rumbling against each other they're probably about I would say eight, 10 barrels high, this pyramid. And then, of course, the only place they were going to go was down the River Lossie. And there's news footage of barrels uh, floating down the River Lossie and everybody getting excited and thinking they were full of whiskey, but they were actually empty barrels. And to be honest, they were absolutely rubbish barrels. They were shot. That's why they were down the bottom. We'd got them from Turkey or somewhere and they were rotten things. But uh, when we put the insurance claim in, of course, these were first fill ex sherrys <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can say that now over here. I hope there's no loss adjusters on the call tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. The pyramids, um, I might try and dig it out. I uh, see so have a, a video when I was sitting on the train from Aberdeen into Elgin. Uh, it's towards the end of the journey, you just go through, the train tracks take you through, and it's just field after field of these pyramids of barrels, and they're, they're 10, 15 high, and it's just, you're just looking at it, it's, it's amazing. Um, there's a big Chivas, Chivas truck there, so I imagine it all belongs to them. I think it's just outside where Strathyla distillery is there, that's where it all starts, yeah. and just in lots of warehousing, it's... It's 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 a it's a great experience when you're you're on the train from Aberdeen to go into Elgin to go into Speyside and you're just waiting to get there. You're waiting to get your first dram, and you just come across it. You know you're getting there when you see all these barrels in front of you. And you're like, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. You know, and it's it's the adult version. Are we, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? You know, it's 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 brilliant. Uh, so. Thanks, everybody. That's the first half of our tasting. We've had our first four whiskies. Uh, we're going to give you a, a few minutes break. Uh, it's 20, 20, 12 on the clock there. So we'll, we'll reconvene at 20 past eight. And we'll go on to our, our next four whiskies. Uh, easy to line up. E-F-G-H. Uh, so we'll see you all in about five minutes time. Uh, welcome back, everybody. We'll move on to our... Next couple of whiskies, which are sample E and sample F. Um, I believe there's a little bit of a change in the ABVs here. Uh, so sample E is 43% and sample F is 46%. Uh, just a little bit coming up a little bit, not too much. Um, and this category is 13 years old to 20 years old. So there's an age statement on the bottle. Um, so you know, both of them are actually a 15 year old. Uh, one is uh, Ben Romach and the other is Glen Allahy. Uh, ben Romach may be familiar to a few of you. Um, it's been around as a, a single malt for a few years now. Uh, if I'm right in saying, Graham, it's owned by, who is it? The, 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 the guys in, in, I forgot their name now, the guys in Elgin. This, uh, Glen Alhey. No, oh, ben, 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 ben Romach. Romach. Sorry, it's uh, owned by Gordon McPhail. That's the name, yeah, sorry, it escaped me there. And Glen Alhey is, I think Billy Walker is there. If anyone doesn't know Billy Walker, he's pretty much been in every, he seems to appear, pop up in a lot of the stories with new companies and uh, when they're, they're, they're buying them over and starting out um 
But if you want to yeah. get your whiskies in the glass, and if you've got, a, like I say, you've got both, if you've got two glasses, get your E and F in there. I did the same. Um, big, massive color differences there. Uh, when you put them in the glass, you can really see the difference there. Um, so hopefully that will tell us a little bit about them. Uh, I'm not sure if many people are familiar with Ben Romick or Glen Allocky. Um, I know a few people were able to spot the the Aberlour from its colour there the last time because it's it has a, a good bit of a sherry influence in the Aberlour and you can see that standing out. You'd imagine that one of these, well, probably both of them, there's a there's a there's a sherry influence somewhere. So the sample we I have here, uh, the nose, the, the official tasting notes are balanced sherry aromas with vanilla pod, zesty orange, spicy ginger. Complemented by delicate chamomile and menthol notes. A bit of tea going on here. I'll make a cup of tea, shall we? And then the taste. A luscious, rich fruit cake with stewed plum. Red apple skin and sharp edge of kiwi fruit with subtle hints of cocoa, nutmeg and cinnamon giving way to sweet honey notes and hints of bonfire embers. Someone must have been on drugs when they wrote that. There's a lot going on there, you know, in the tasting note. The finish, traces of charred oak, complimenting sweet tangerine, plum, and nectarine, completed by a gorgeous touch of milk chocolate. Right, let's see what we're getting here. Let's see what we're... Well, there's a wee touch of bonfire on the nose, in fairness, even though it says it's on the taste. But that, that must be a, 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 maybe a touch of peat in this, I'd imagine then, Graham. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say uh, one of these distilleries is, is known for being a, a likely peated, so I won't say which one, otherwise that, that would give the, the game away. But um, speaking about the two distilleries, again, they've got a bit of a history. Ben Romich was closed for a period of time between 1983 and 1997. I think mostly because it it struggled for its water source, which, you know, if you don't have water, you don't have a distillery. So it, it, uh, it toiled there, but fair play to Gordon McPhail. Before then, you probably know them, you know, they're, they're, they're whiskey retailers, whiskey blenders, independent bottlers. But this was their first venture into buying a distillery. And they, they bought the distillery and they've, they've brought it back to the, to the fore. Glen Glen Alhi is uh, was a Shivas distillery, and when Shivas and Pernod Ricard came together, Glen Alhi was, I think, just surplus to requirements. It wasn't a, a monopoly thing or anything like that in any market. It was a it's very much a blending malt. But Billy Walker is 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 great at, at turning around sleeping giants. He's done it with he did it with Ben Reich, He did it with Glen Dronach. And he's doing the same with Glen Allochy. So, you know, he can spot a, a, a good quality distillery and, and put his mark on it. There's no doubt. I mean, um, the, other, the other Michael who's on the call there, we both were in uh, Glen Dronach and uh, Ben Ria a few years ago together. And, you know, a phenomenal experience. Just, you know, we've, we've, done, the, we've, done, the, we've done a distillery tour and we're like, and then I think the guy in Ben Rieck says, Look, do you want to do the distillery tour? Because if you do, here's the still house over there. Or do you want to come straight to the warehouse? It's over there. And if you go to the warehouse, go get samples. So everybody, part, nobody done the tour of Ben, ben Rieck. We just all went to the warehouse. And um, that, was, that was something else. It was, a, it was a, a real treat for us, wasn't it, Michael? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but... They're not, they're, these whiskies are not in, 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 in tonight, but if you ever get your hands on a bottle of uh, Glendronach or Ben Rea, savour it and enjoy it. They're beautiful whiskies. Um, absolutely stunning stuff. Um, so if you've got whiskey F in your glass as well, um, we'll give you the, the, some of the tasting notes we've got here. The nose, overflowing with raisins, butterscotch and sweet spice. Palate, the rainbow of sweet spices, raisins, and butterscotch, butterscotch develops the banana, orange peel, and dark chocolate. How did you get a rainbow into the taste of a pal on the palate? 
Are they going for the Pride Parade? They must be going for the Pride Parade in, in, in June or something. They must be. Um, the finish, coffee, Turkish delight, and just a hint of flaky sea salt. Not that fine stuff, not that rock stuff, the flaky stuff. Flaky sea salt. So let's have a I'm gonna have you taste of this. Alex, you, you hit the nail on the head. Skittles, taste the rainbow. <laughs> So I, I was actually privileged enough to try these a couple of times over the last few months, both, both brands, just accidentally. And I've, they're both excellent whiskies. Um, I, I find it very hard to separate them tonight. Uh, and I, I think the, the, the both have shared the influences. I think hmm. the Ben Romex is, is bourbon and sherry, and then the Glenel, he's a... A sherry finish, PX all are also finished. So, so they're, they're they're quite similar in their makeup as well. Graham, how does that like uh, you know affect the whiskey? You know, you, you said they've both got sherry in the makeup. So you know the Ben Romans has probably got you know a, a mixture of bourbon and sherry casks fully matured in there, and then the Glen Allergy is probably as you said a finish. So it's like spent a lot of time in Burba and then transferred to a sherry barrel. And um, should we get get different things off that? You know, you know, as a distiller and looking at that, what what would you do? Do you like would you take a fully matured sherry cask and then like 50 bourbon casks and bring them all together? Or would you bring a selection of bourbon casks and then transfer them to a selection of sherry casks? Um because I'd imagine it, it there's a difference somewhere along the line. Yeah, I think I think they're two different products, really. You know, I think um, if you're using full maturation sherry at this age, it, it likely will be a at least a second fill or a third fill cask. So, so a cask has been used before um, to go full maturation sherry at this stage. You really will be drinking something uh, close to treacle and, and quite dark and maybe not that pleasant even. So. You know, second fill sherry is a great thing that uh, sort of 15 years old. Whereas a sherry finish is, is a different thing. You're adding a real fresh zest of sherry in there. So it has the, the bourbon spice and then and the sherry character coming through quite, quite, uh, quite strong as a hit. So you're getting two characters fighting. So a sherry finish will probably have more more impact on you than than a bourbon and sherry mix full maturation because, as I say, they won't all be first fills; they'll be second, third fills. But they both have their place. Uh, more traditionally, I think full maturation is 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 the more traditional thing. Wood finishes are you know they're, they're still relatively new in in the in the whiskey term, so um, it really is. It's, 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 it's again it comes down to a matter of taste your preference and you know one night you might want the big the big hit the, the, the sherry finish which is you know you've added lots of character late on and then another night you want just the smooth mellow you know nice second third fill combination yeah you're right I, I, I think that as well when I'm drinking whiskey you know I'm going to go on for these like an example would be like a, a Glendronach where it's just like, bah, slaps you in the face with sherry or, you know, pair, come back a little bit and try something a little bit different. It's a bit more subtle. Um, I think both these whiskies are excellent. Uh, both 15-year-olds, if you're into your, your, your age whiskies, um, pr pretty much good value for money in the price bracket. Um, guide price on both of them is 55 to 60 pounds. So, you know, about 70, 75 euro a bottle. And compare that to, you know, some Irish whiskies, uh, older Irish whiskies, you know, from established distilleries, you know. Uh, it's a very different. Uh, you can never compare the price of a new Irish distillery to an established Irish distillery. Uh, so, you know, don't, don't do that. <laughs> 
No, definitely not. They're different, you know, different animals altogether. Uh, and you you have to nurture the young distilleries and give them their give them their place. You're almost when you're buying a bottle of uh, Irish whiskey from a, a new distillery, you're, you're you're investing in them for the future as well. I think you, you have to remember that. And it's just uh, unfortunately, yeah, it, it is a little bit more expensive, but whiskey making is is very expensive and you know, the Scottish distillers, most of them are are much more uh, sort of ahead of, of ahead of Ireland, and uh, you know they, they they've made their money and they can invest. And well, they're and, well established. They've been around for the years. Yeah. So you know, I you know, for and, and it's bizarre, Graham. And like Dingo would be now called established distillery in Ireland. You know. You know, even what's what eight or nine years, um, but it's still, you still have your very hard things to do. And you know, you, yeah. at the end of the day, you make a product. You have to make money to pay the staff, to pay you, to you know, to, to yeah. keep the company running. Um, it's yeah, very well, different sure. if you had a distillery for a hundred years, and you just you get going with the flow and you're just doing your thing, and you know, it's all done. The infrastructure is there. It's all done. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're and, reaching. It reaching a stage at Dingle now where the whiskey is starting to uh, to pay for itself and be uh, whereas you know in the first five six years you really are the whiskey is 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 the child that you're putting through university and it's you're not getting anything back from now now the child has come out of university and well at least you're not maybe paying for them anymore <laughs> yeah. they're not they're not paying you not paying you back quite yet but they're <laughs> I, I always say that a new distillery is like winning the lottery and throwing all the money you won on a bonfire it's <laughs> burning it away you know because uh, it'll take you a long time to get it back it's it's a great industry and, and great credit to the guys behind Dingo and yourself for you know, the, way, the way it's going and, and in fact every other new distillery in Ireland the, that entrepreneurial ship and you know we're going for this it's, it's an amazing thing to do uh, so We'll have a wee vote there, will we? So we're we'll, we'll going to E and F. I'll, I'll get uh, the, the vote up on the screen here in a second. Give me a, a minute. So four, three, E and F. Here we go. Once a poll. Oh, well, F is streaming ahead at the moment. Now, it looks like it looks like F has uh, one of the a little bit of a landslide here. One of our the first ones. Excuse me, I'm just writing down the results just to make sure I have them in paper form. Uh, everybody voted? Anybody else? We all done? Uh, so we'll end the poll there. And this off the screen. So what did we have? So E uh, was Ben Romick. Uh, someone alluded to the old brand in Ben Romick. This is the old branding because this is the bottle that uh, the Spirit of Space I'd sent over to me. Uh, prior to the, the new branding last year. We just didn't open it until recently for this event. So that was uh, Ben Roman, 15 year old. Um, and then uh, F was the Glen Alkay, 15 year old. You know. There we go. Uh, Glen Alkay is actually already available in Ireland. Um, our friends at Celtic Whiskey Shop stock that. Uh, uh, not sure about Ben Romick, it can be a bit in and out. Um, but uh, I hope you like both these whiskies. I enjoyed both of them. I found them very hard to separate. I uh, wasn't too sure how how to split them, you know. Um, both excellent in their own right. And uh, I suppose if I did vote, I might have went for uh, probably that Glen Alhe. I think that just that difference in that sheriness there is a little bit really nice. <laughs> Someone said, 
I'd go for Gelston's 26. Uh, no, uh, actually, I have a new Gelston's over there. It's a 28 year old in the background. So, <laughs> um, so we'll move on to our uh, the last two whiskies of the night. Um, these are quite expensive whiskies. These are 21 years and over. So the older whiskies both have age statements on the bottle. Um, one of them commands about £300. Uh, well, the guy price here is £220 um, for that one. And one commands about £200, but the guy price is £125. Um, these notes were written a while ago. They've certainly gone up in value. There's no doubt about it. Um, both are absolute stunners. Absolute amazing whiskies. Um, so that's whiskey G and H. If you want to get your um, your uh, your whiskies in your glasses, uh, I don't know. But I put up when I, we're on that that break there. I put up a video that Martin sent me. I don't know if anybody's seen it because uh, my screen wasn't shared. Um, so I might I might actually make an attempt to stick it up again here while everybody's here. Um, and just take me a second or two. We'll we'll share the screen. And I'll, I'll figure it out from there on. Found H. So that was from, from Martin, um, who done his line of duty uh, tonight of whiskies, and he found H. So if anybody's uh, watched Line of Duty or, or unsure of it, you can actually watch it on uh, Netflix, I think, and it's on BBC One every Sunday night. I think it's nearly over on, on the channel. But uh, there you go. That was it. That was Martin's take on Line of Duty. He's found H. If you've watched it, you'll know what we're talking about. Um, so everybody, you know, have a, a wee taste of uh, G and H. See what you think about it. Certainly some very different notes coming off here. I'll tell you a little bit about G, what the, the official tasting notes are. Those complex yet refined with tempting aromas of marmalade, honey, fresh ground coffee, sherry and nuts. Some oaky tannins. The palate, full-bodied and robust. The sherry and oak fight for your attention, yet neither overpower. Finish, it's intense, long-lasting, dry and malty with a beautiful dark chocolate taste at the back of your mouth. There we go. That was uh, that sample G. I have to actually take sample G out the, the bottle because it's the last dregs of it. We had a little bit of spillage on this one. And no, I didn't drink it. I didn't wasn't drinking it when I shouldn't be. Mm. Both these are absolute crackers, you know. Um, I'll give you the tasting notes of sample H. Nose, apple blossom, freshly baked bread, and candied lemon. The palate. Layers of rich vanilla oak, sweet brioche, sandalwood, pear sorbet, and white grape. Finish long, opulent, and sweet. So these whiskies are from Glen Farkless and Glen Fiddick Distillery. Both unbelievable distilleries in Scotland. Uh, Glen Fiddick is one of the reasons why we were able to enjoy single malt many, many years ago, before I was born anyway. And they decided to start bottling single malt whiskey uh, into a mass market and it's taken off. It gets a bit of a bad rep. I don't know why. It's quality whiskey. You have a 12 year old, you can pick it up in a, 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 you know, for 30, 40, you know, in the 40 euro mark for a bottle. Stunning whiskey. 12 year old whiskey, 40 quid a bottle. It's great. 
the, the whiskey purists go, oh no, oh no, 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 we want something different now. I tell you what, bang for your buck, Glenn Fiddick, 12 year old, all day long. This is not a 12 year old Glenn Fiddick in the days and tonight, it's a 23 year old. Very different. Glenn Farkas, I love Glenn Farkas as well. Uh, lots of great flavours in, in their whiskies. And um, the label hasn't changed in all my lifetime, as long as I've been drinking whiskey. It's one of the last family owned distilleries in space, isn't it, Graham? Yeah, I think there's so much to compare and contrast with the two two distilleries here. The you know they're both owned by families named with the name Grant, William Grant at Glenfiddich and and uh, Grant at, at uh, Glen Farkless. But I kind of look at them as being twin brothers who one stayed at home and worked at home on the farm, and the other one has moved on and and seen the world. And Glenfiddich has kind of transformed into a global brand but also not with just Glenfiddich they've promoted Balveni and uh, Hendrix Gin and they've moved into lots of different angles whereas Glen Farkless and the Grants there have focused purely on their whiskey and they have kept it uh, very very rigid in what they do and you know there's no wrongs or rights it's it's great to see two two approaches to how Whiskey is made. They're, they're two absolute stalwarts of Speyside and independence as well, which is great, you know, to, to reach the size, especially the size that Glenn Fiddick is and William Grants are. Uh, to reach that and remain independent is, is huge. And my, my first whiskey job um, in the whiskey industry was, was at Glenn Fiddick. I, I moved into Glenn Fiddick in the bottling side after moving up from Webster's Brewery and then moved into the distillation side and, and, and looked after Glenfiddich, Balvenie and Canindy. So, so yeah, I'm like you. I think Glenfiddich it, it, get, it gets looked down on, but um, it has some quality spirit, and especially in the older whiskies, Glenfiddich certainly can match anybody in, in what they do. Yeah, I, I love it. It's a great distillery. I, I, I visited there. I've been there a lot of times, but um, I visited with my father probably in, I always remember, probably, I think it was 2011, and uh, myself and my father and, was, and um, stepmother, we, we went there. Um, I'm from, my father lives in a town called Cooper Angus, which is in Blair, just outside Blair Gowrie, about 20 miles north of Dundee. And from there, you're about 20 miles to Glen Shee, which is the ski resort, a ski resort in Scotland. And from there, you keep going up over the hills, blah, 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 blah. and you come over the Cairngorms and you end up in Speyside. And uh, we done it one day. Glenn Fittick were expecting us. We were about three hours late, in fairness, but we got there and um, made a private tour. Uh, it was arranged from a business sort of side of things, a whiskey industry thing. And I was, you know, my father is a fan of Glenn Fittick, so we decided to go there. That was that. And I made a few calls and we went there. And then uh, we've done the tour of the story. It's an amazing tour. And we got taken into the, uh, one of the warehouses. And Glenn, Glenn Fiddick of it, we call it a, a, sort of like a silhouette of that, where they'll, they'll dump whiskey into it and let it marry there and take it out. And it's in a, one of the warehouses. We were taken to that warehouse, and this is a big vat of wooden vat of whiskey in front of us. You've got a little metal staircase, a little platform around it. You can stand on it and look at it. And um, my father just sees whiskey in front of him in a big vat and goes, oh, big smile on his face. Because the aromas and the smell of it is amazing, you know, and it's cast rent. This is amazing stuff. And um, the lady doing the tour put the, the vessel and the copper dog down and the dog in and dropped it in and pulls out a big sample of whiskey. And my eyes lit up at this stage. I'm like, oh, we're getting to drink it. My father's like, oh, you can just see the two of us. They're just, this is heaven. And I know I've told this story before, but she stood there and says, and for health and safety reasons, we can't actually drink, let you taste this whiskey, and then dumped it back in. And the two of us were standing there going, we're not moving. And we just didn't move. So I'm, if anyone knows me, um, I've drank enough beer in my lifetime that I have a bit of a beer belly. Uh, and my father's done the same. So the two big fat lads stand at the top of the staircase, the tour guy's not getting down. 
I'm like, go on, would you go on, get some of that whiskey out and let us have a taste of it. Nobody's going to see us. It's just us. Oh, I can't be doing that. I can't be doing that. And we thought, initially we thought it was a joke, you know, and she was just dangling us and stringing us along a little bit. And, but no, she was dead serious. Anyway, she eventually, she was coming to like, you're not getting out of here until we get a sample. And um, she dropped it down and pulled us a big sample. It's a big vessel. It's quite a big, you know, it's not like a 20 mil sample. There's like, it's probably about 500 mil in there. And uh, you know, myself and my father, it was, it was like drinking a, um, it was like, like, like drinking a bottle of water after you've run a marathon. And it was a glug, 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 you know. Um, that's when she knew she definitely made a mistake by letting us drink it. But it was an amazing experience. You're standing in front of this vat of whiskey and just going, oh, here we go. Beautiful whiskey, excellent stuff. And in fact, in 2019, at the Spirit of Faith Space Side Festival, I spent uh, an evening on a Friday night in, in the Grand Fedex store and a dinner with the brand ambassadors. And they just kept firing the whiskeys to us. And I, I wrote down all the whiskeys that we had. And then it was only the next day in the morning when you look back and write, what whiskeys did I have last night? And I totaled up the cost of the whiskey that I had. And if I bought them by the bottle, it was going to cost me about 8,000 euro. Um, you just keep firing whiskeys. And I made lots of friends that night, lots of other Glenfiddich fans there and uh, still keep in touch with them. And we're, we're all, you know, there's an odd message pops up. Can't wait to the next dinner at Glenfiddich Distillery in 2022, hopefully. And it's great. It's, it's just great, great times, you know. Someone's asked, did I fall out of there? I fell in it in many distillery, actually. And my, my, actually, I probably did fall out of that one because I don't drive, so I've always got a driver with me. Uh, one of my favourite distilleries that I fell out of I was actually at Glen Livet and another space side distillery. And um, at the time, it's, it's been all revamped and done up now. There was a hill down to the car park and it was quite a bit slippery and icy. It was winter. As my uncle Ronnie had drove me up there from Cooper Angus up into space side and went to Glen, Fiddick, uh, Glen Livet that day and we were drinking away. He was driving, so I was drinking his whiskey samples and he was robbing all the glasses, so these big fancy tumblers. Typical... Dundonian, they're, they're worse than scousers, trust me, they rob everything. If it's not nailed down, they rob it. So he had his glass, all these glasses in the pocket. And he says, so he ran out of space. He says, would you put these glasses in your pocket? And he says, you're lighting up, don't be robbing the, don't be robbing the glasses. If you want to rob it, rob the whiskey. He says, well, I don't drink whiskey. He says, why drink whiskey? Rob it for me. But anyway, he had all these glasses. So I start putting them in my pockets inside. And the, the car parts on a hill like that. And we're at the bottom of the hill and we're up here. And we're walking down to the car. I've had a, a good few drams because I've been double drinking essentially. I've been drinking for him as well. Shame. I had to drink someone else's whiskey. And I slipped and I fell on my backside and I ended up rolling down uh, the hill you know, with lots of glasses in my in pockets. Um, so I ran down the hill and they started smashing and cutting me. It was in a bit of a, bit of a mess, shall we say. Uh, rule of thumb, if you go into a whiskey distillery, don't rob the glasses. Just don't do it. And because if you fall over, you're done. And um, so I love Spaceside and I have so many memories of going there, Graham. It's it's a beautiful place. You're you're I'm, I'm, I I said on our email we sent out to people that you you're a space sider. I, I I'm not sure if you're a born and bred space sider, but you've spent <laughs> enough time there and you did well, you probably are. So you can tell us. Born and born and bred in Elgin. So <laughs> there yeah. you go. Yeah. Well, you can argue whether the heart of Speyside is Elgin or, in whiskey terms, it's probably Dufftown yeah. that is the heart. But, uh, but yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, it, uh, it is. It's a great place. And I think, I, uh, after all we've been through this last year or so, it's made us appreciate these memories. And I think we're all desperate to get back and, and see distilleries and, and get involved in festivals and just get into interacting normally you know it's it's lovely doing this but we're all staring at each other on a screen it's not <laughs> not you quite know. the same is it yeah. yeah yeah you know it's it's just absolutely not quite the same and uh, yeah it'll continue it'll have its place it's great for engaging with people at a from a distance who are at a distance but when we can all come together that's that's the great thing so yeah i hope to do I'll get back to the Speyside Whiskey Festival uh, 
I don't know if it will happen later on this year or early next year back to normal. Definitely go back because life's too short not to exactly. get involved, you know. And uh, I think the whiskey industry, we all need to stay together and get together and and just enjoy the moment. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. The, the Space Night Whiskey Festival this year are actually going virtually online like this. Um, mm. I think I think the majority of it is, uh, unfortunately, the, the, the UK left the EU, so you can't get the tasting packs for the, some of the events because they can't ship to the EU just the way things are at the moment. Hopefully that will settle down and uh, Boris Johnson will cop on and he, we'll, we'll be getting whiskey from the UK again. Um, <clears throat> other than that, you know, the Space Ice Whiskey tonight, I've and thoroughly enjoyed every one of these, Graham. Every one of them is a standout whiskey uh, in their own right. They're very hard to vote against and vote for, and, you know, it's just judging. But we'll, we'll put our second last vote up, and we have to judge between G and H. And then after that, we'll have the, the final poll where you judge your favourite on the end of the night. Well, let me fill this up for you. Vote four. There we go. So, is it G or H, people? Well, it's looking like G might just have it. There's a few coming back for H there. Yeah. All the line of duty fans will be voting for H because they want to find out who he is. <laughs> Excuse me a second, I just have to pull a blind down. All right, 92 percent of people voted, so we're intermittent in the poll. So we end the poll. So G has one. Twin names is writing that down. So whiskey G. What was whiskey G? Off the screen. It was the Glen Farkless twenty-five-year-old, uh, an absolute belter whiskey. And I mentioned that Glen Farkless probably haven't changed the label in God knows how long, and they haven't. They keep if it works, don't fix it, you know, that's what they do. And then this is a bit of a stunner rebuttal. This is the Glen for the Grand Crew, 23 years old. Uh, the Grand Crew, uh, as alludes to, uh, it's a cuvee cask finish. It's been matured in wine barrels. Uh, most interesting thing about this bottle is not the actual bottle, it's the box. And I really, I really thought about trying to do a magic trick with this box because it's like a revolving door, you know, you can just keep going with it, you know. And I, I, I was hoping I could do a magic trick where the bottle would appear now, but it hasn't because I didn't do a magic trick because I'm, I'm rubbish at magic. Uh, <laughs> but that would have been, it's, it's probably, uh, that's probably why it's 300 quid a bottle because the box costs 150 quid. Um, so you've had um, eight fantastic whiskies, all uh, amazing. And um, so as we wrap up the tasting tonight, we, we have to, you get one vote, okay? You've, you've already had four votes and you've decided that these are your favorite out of these. So in this vote, okay, if you voted whiskey A before, you sort of really can't vote whiskey B in this one. You know, it doesn't really make fucking sense if you do that. So you've got your four favorites essentially. And out of these are four favorites, You've got to vote which is your favourite on the night. And then we'll have, we'll crown our champion in, in Ireland tonight. Actually, we've got people in Germany on tonight. I think uh, Sonia's actually from Space Ice. He's based in Germany. And we've got Michael, who's also in Germany. They sneaked into the tasting. It was meant to be an Ireland only one, but they're in here. Um, so. And the, the strange thing about this is that. A whiskey that didn't win its own category can win outright. <laughs> Don't ask me to explain it, <laughs> but it, it has happened more than once and yeah. it is possible. It's just uh, 
mathematically possible, just go and ask uh, your old school teacher to explain. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to launch the poll. Um, give you a couple of minutes to have a look at this and put your votes in. Here we go. Your overall favourite whiskey was. So uh, it looks like um, we're all going for uh, for for G. There's a few people still to vote. Seeing the numbers go up. I wonder. I wonder if, if, if the G get a, a vote because it was going far because so nobody knows it and it's an, an amazing whiskey. <laughs> Um, but it was it was done well in its previous poll. Anyway, it won its category anyway. And now it's won. It looks like it's won the overall. So we're a minute and a half into that poll, so we're going to end it. So you haven't voted. Uh, two, three, two, one. There we go. So there we are. Um, the winner of tonight's tasting and what you've all selected is the, the Glen Farquist 25 year old as our, our um, Speyside Whiskey of the Year in Dublin. Uh, many thanks for everybody who voted. Uh, but more importantly, a big special thanks for Graham uh, for joining us tonight and telling us a few stories about Speyside. Um, Graham, we know you're going to be in demand in the next few weeks. Uh, as, as, as they say in Game of Thrones, something is coming or winter is coming, but Whiskey is coming, you know. Yeah, definitely exciting times at Dingle. As I said, we're moving into our, our next phase. So, but uh, yeah, it's just part of the journey, the Dingle journey, which is lovely to be a part of. So the reason I moved across here was to, to join in on that and hopefully steer Dingle into the next you know, 5, 10, 15 years. And we're, we're making that next step soon enough. So yeah, please follow us. Brilliant. And I think I think anybody here is is following Dingle. We're all whiskey fans on the call tonight. We're all we've all heard of, of Dingle and I'm sure we've all sampled Dingle at some stage. So thanks very much, Graham. Uh, and just for everybody else, 